Hello everyone, this is Mary Hart, the CEO and founder of the Alternative Investing Movement. And today we are going to talk about alternative investing in general. What it is, why it uh, might be advantageous to invest in alternative assets, and what some of those asset classes are, what some of the risks are, and things like that. This is a 30,000 foot overview of alternative investing, and each of your modules in your membership portal will have more specifics about the different types of alternative investing, at least in the real estate space and private mortgage space and private lending space. So let's get started. What is an alternative investment? In general, it is any investment asset class that is not stocks, bonds, or cash. It is a huge range of investment asset classes, ranging from tangible uh, assets like artwork, wine collections, uh, gold and other precious metals, commodities, real estate investing, of course, is a big class of alternative investing, but it can also be financial investing like hedge funds, private equity funds, venture capital, you can have oil and gas investments, equipment leasing, the list goes on and on. And in fact, in your portal, we will have a list, a very exhaustive list of alternative investing asset classes for you to peruse at your leisure. In any event, so let's talk about who can invest in alternative investments. Pretty much anyone, depending on the type of investment. There are some financial alternative investments, such as syndications and hedge funds, that generally require you to be an accredited investor. That is a term of art, accredited investor, accredited investor. And it is someone whose net worth is more than a million dollars or a million or more, I think it is, a million or more dollars, not including the value of your personal home. So you have a net worth of a million dollars or you have an income, uh, annual income of $200,000 or more as a single person or $300,000 or more as a married couple. So that is an accredited investor. There's no certification that you actually get. You will either be required to sign an affidavit stating uh, under oath that you are an accredited investor, or sometimes you need to show proof of that by having your financial planner or your banker or somebody show the value of the assets that you currently have. So that's who can invest in alternative investments. So depending on what you're doing, pretty much anybody from someone with no money to someone with billions of dollars can invest in an alternative investment asset class. So how does alternative investing differ from the traditional stock model? Stocks, bonds, and cash, of course, are what I mean when I refer to the traditional model. And alternative investments are not publicly traded on platforms like the NASDAQ and, and Dow Jones. So you will not find them if you go look at the NASDAQ. Alternative investments are not there. That's where you find stocks and things like that. So an alternative investment is usually less liquid than a traditional stock market type investment. For, uh, for instance, you could sell a share of stock or a bond very easily just through one of those trading platforms. Um, however, if your alternative investment is something like a large apartment building or 5,000 acre farm or timberland or even a single family home, you can't just easily sell it that quickly. It's, it's less liquid. You can't just pick up the phone, call a stockbroker and sell your, your home, right? So alternative investments are less liquid than traditional stock, uh, stock investments. They uh, traditionally have less transparency about price and value, meaning this. If you wanna know what a share of uh, Amazon stock is selling for, you can find that just by Googling it. But if you wanna know what your apartment building's worth or a single family home or that farmland or your storage unit buildings or anything else, uh, your private loans, you're gonna to have to find a way to value those. And it will not be quite as simple as finding the value of a stock or bond. There's usually less fluctuation in the value of alternative investing assets, and they're not as tied to the fluctuation in the stock market, so they're, they're a little more stable generally, but they're also a little riskier in many cases. So, and because you're locked into them for a longer period of time, that risk can go up. So you need to make sure that you understand your investment, your alternative investment, and that you have done your due diligence and you're willing to take on any additional risk. So what are uh, some more advantages of alternative investments? We talked about um, the low correlation between investment 
alternative investments and stock type asset classes. So if the stock market drops, you're not going to necessarily see a correlation in the drop in value in your, your alternative investment. Hopefully it should stay a little more stable. Uh, investing in alternative investments also gives you some diversification from the stock market. I know some people choose not to be in the stock market at all. Some people choose just to be diversified between the stock market and other alternative investments. Some people choose just the stock market in general, nothing else. I personally like to spread out my risk between different asset classes. So I have a chunk in the stock market and I have a chunk in different asset classes within alternative investing. And in fact, what I've done for myself is create a, what I think is the, the allocation between the different types of asset classes that I want to strive for. And then I look at how much of my investable funds I have invested in those different classes and occasionally will tweak them to meet my allocation. So for instance, if I wanted 40% in the stock market, do I have 40% in the stock market or do I need to add more? If I want 40% and I have 80% in the stock market, maybe I want to take some of those uh, stocks off the table and reinvest that in an alternative asset class. So you see, it's really a personal decision how much you diversify between the different asset classes. Um, and you might, if you need help, talk to a financial advisor or someone else that's not just tied into the stock market. Talk to someone who understands what the pros and cons are of the different asset classes and try to come up with your own allocation, what makes sense for you. So another advantage of alternative investments is lower volatility. We talked about that a little bit, that the impact of the stock market does not really affect um, alternative investments as much. So you have lower volatility. You know, I think uh, if there's a war on Ukraine like there is right now, when that started, it could, it could really affect the stock market. It's less likely to immediately affect your multifamily apartment building, for instance. So there's less volatility based on global events and um, uh, other, other factors. Doesn't mean it can't happen, but it's just usually not as volatile as the stock market. Some of your alternative investment classes uh, will give you an inflation hedge, will be good to counteract the effects of inflation. Those are usually things like oil and gas, uh, gold, real estate, things like that. Okay, so that's a, an inflation hedge is an advantage. And then potentially with alternative investments, you can have higher returns. I know that people talk about it being a great deal to get a five to 6% return um, in the stock market, annual return. Well, I've been in alternative investments that easily bring you 10, 15% return. So you might have some higher risk, but often you have the potential for greater returns. So what are some other risks of the alternative investing uh, investments? Well, there's a lack of regulation. So the stock market is regulated by the SEC. And there are some, uh, some things like Dodd-Frank that regulate some of our alternative investments. But as a whole, there's less regulation in the alternative investment space. That's one of the reasons why things are not as transparent. There aren't as many public reports about value and what's going on in the alternative investment space. But there's a less regulation. Um, there is a lack of transparency because of that, because there are fewer regulatory filings. You're not going to find as easily available public information about how these alternative investments are run or what their, um, their performance rates are. Now, of course, if you're just doing your own investing in your own single family homes or vacation rentals or apartment buildings or land, you can come up with your own value and your own investing. But if you're looking at, uh, larger types of alternative investments like private equity funds and venture capital and things like that. It's a little harder to get that information. It's less transparent, less available. So alternative investments can be difficult to value, right? How do you come up with the value for timberland or for storage units? You know, you've got to get comps from other properties. Um, so a little bit more difficult to value than say a stock that's easily valued on the, on the stock market. Um, some of these alternative investments will have a higher minimum investment amount. Like if you're in a syndication or a hedge fund, sometimes you have to put in at least a hundred thousand dollar investment in order to qualify at all. Some of them are 50,000. I've even been in some that are 25,000, but in general, the ones I see the syndications and hedge funds have a minimum $100,000 investment to be involved. Some people don't have that hundred thousand to, to throw at it. And as we mentioned earlier, alternative investing can have higher returns, but it also can have higher risks. So you want to be very careful about your risks. Learn what you have to do for each different asset class to um, do due diligence on that investment and make sure that you're doing your due. Do your due diligence well. Make sure you're ready to take on that risk. 
All right, so along those lines, here are some questions you definitely need to ask yourself before you go into an alternative investment, okay? Do you have the skills and resources necessary to vet that deal, to vet that property, to determine whether it's a good investment for you? And if not, do you have the resources to find somebody who can help you do that? Do you have the skills and resources to manage that investment unless you're just seriously passively investing in a fund, a syndication or something like that? Either you're gonna to have to manage your investment or you're gonna to have to hire that out. Say with a single family uh, portfolio, maybe you have to have a property management team. If you're buying notes, maybe you have to have servicers that manage your, your notes for you. So do you have the skills and resources to manage these things yourself or will you need others? If you need others, are there any recurring fees? How much will it cost you to hire other people to manage these deals for you? How easily can you get your money out of the investment? Let's say that you needed to liquidate quickly. Is the type of alternative investment you're in allow you to do that? And if not, then you really have to decide, is this the type of investment I want to be in? How important is it to you that you can get your money out quickly? Because a lot of these alternative investments, you can't just get your money out in a matter of days or even weeks or sometimes even months. Let's say that you have um, a syndication investment. We'll go into that later in our education uh, videos, but you may have that locked up for two years, three years, sometimes even 10 years. If you own a single family home, how quickly can you sell that and get your cash? It's probably not as quick as, you know, stocks. You may have to take a month or six weeks, sometimes several months to sell it and get paid. So obviously, um, if you're, you have to decide how long you're able to lock up your capital, your funds without it being a problem for you. And what is your comfort level with that investment? So um, most of us know what single family homes are like. We live in them. Um, so you probably feel more comfortable with having tenants in there in a single family home, but let's say you wanted to do storage buildings or multifamily or um, timberland or anything like that. You know, how comfortable do you feel with that and how, how knowledgeable are you and how much more knowledge do you have to gain and who needs to help you in those types of investments? So th those are things to think about. So let's talk a little bit about the types of alternative investments. And as I said, this is more of a 30,000 foot overview and we will have the longer list of alternative investments in your member portal. And of course we will, some of these asset classes, we will be going into great detail in uh, various educational videos and uh, different documents and resources. But let me just cover some of them briefly in this 30,000 foot overview. So obviously real estate is gonna be a big one for our group. It's what most of us are interested in is real estate, right? And so you've got all sorts of different kinds of real estate. It's, it's one of the most appealing asset classes in the alternative investing space because it appreciates over time, generally speaking. It generally has a um, nice return on investment when selling if, it's, if it has appreciated. It is an inflation hedge. It's good for diversification. It can provide you a balance of cash flow and appreciation if you buy right and you manage it right. So real estate is a big one. And within that category of real estate, there are many, many different classes of real estate, right? First of all, there are services with real estate that, that um, you don't even actually ever own the real estate. Do you want to be a wholesaler where you find properties and um, assign contracts over to other people to buy the properties? Do you want to be a flipper? You buy that property maybe and you flip it, or maybe you're just hired as the contractor for a percentage of the profits. Or do you want to actually own the single family rental or a multifamily apartment building or a vacation rental or a storage unit building? You see what I mean? So there are lots and lots of different asset classes. Car washes, that's an interesting business. Car washes have a huge um, ROI, return on investment. In fact, I'm looking right now at investing in a syndicated fund that is planning on um, constructing 30 to 50 car washes across the nation. And the return over three years is expected to uh, average about 25% a year. So it could be a really great asset class, but you'll want to do your due diligence on these things, right? Okay, so we're not gonna go into too much more about the real estate classes, because you know there are lots and lots of them. Um, private mortgages. So you probably have a mortgage on your home if you bought a home with a loan. And so you can actually buy these private mortgages on people's homes. And there are different ways to buy them. There, you can buy them from banks and hedge funds, although you usually have to do that 
through a platform because you can't just go to the bank or the hedge fund and buy one or two or even 10 notes. Usually they're selling them hundreds or thousands of notes at a time. But there are platforms um, where you can go uh, buy one-off notes that um, other platforms are selling. You can buy notes from seller financed notes. So people who have sold their home and taken back a note sometimes will want to sell that note. So you can buy these banker hedge fund notes, you can buy seller finance notes. You can buy notes that are performing, meaning the borrowers are paying on time, or non-performing, they're not paying at all, or sub-performing, meaning they're paying but they're late a lot, things like that. You can buy notes that have a first lien position, the house is the collateral for the note, so if they stop paying, you can take the house back, and you can buy notes that are in the first lien position, meaning you're first in line to get paid, or you can buy notes in the second lien position. And as you'll see when we go through our modules talking more about notes, the different types of notes, the, the lien position, and whether they're performing, non-performing, or sub-performing will help dictate the, the value of that note and what you may have to pay for it, what level of discount you can get when you buy that note. So keep that in mind. So besides buying notes, you can also be a private lender. Now that's usually more in the commercial space where you're loaning to people who are not living in the house. So maybe you're loaning to uh, flippers, people who are renovating houses for resale. So I've done a lot of that over the last 10 or 15 years. And I love that. I think the effort to return ratio is great on that type of investment. And we will go into more detail on that um, as we get to that module. But that is certainly a way to be involved in note investing, but you're not, you're not buying notes, you're creating a note, and you're creating it when you lend, say, to a flipper. You can also buy a property and sell it on a note and become the, the, uh, the seller financer, so to speak, yourself. So there are different ways to get into the note space. Um, there are tax liens where if someone has not paid their property taxes, then the municipality in some places will sell uh, a tax lien that you can pay those taxes and have the right to foreclose on the property if the homeowner doesn't come in within a certain period of time and pay those taxes plus some extra for you. So I know a lot of people who've made quite a bit of money uh, using tax lien investing as their strategy. They pay cents on the dollar to get a to buy a tax lien and then if they cannot get the homeowner to pay those taxes back then they are able to basically take the house back and and use whatever exit strategy they want at that point whether that's renovating the house and putting a tenant in it or uh, renovating the house and flipping it or just selling it to another investor or something like that so tax liens is an interesting um, interesting type of alternative investment you can invest in a private company. You can buy an equity share in a private company. And sometimes you can make a really high return doing that, but there can be a lot of risk. And, and so I'm not gonna go into great detail about that one right now. Just realize that if you're buying a private equity share in a private company, there is way less public transparency about the financial details of that investment. And so you want to research your target company very, very well find out their performance, uh, their financials, talk to the people in charge, and um, that's not as easy for those of us who are just starting out, but that is a potential option. Equipment leasing, I think this is a really interesting one. So you can either get together with a group of investors or there are funds you can buy into um, where people pool their money and they buy like a whole fleet of construction equipment or medical equipment, and then they lease out that equipment to the businesses that use them. And so those funds usually last from seven to 10 years if you're going through a fund. Um, but you can, uh, you can make, make some good money on those. It's a little bit riskier. You have to make sure you understand um, the fund sponsor and how good they are at what they're doing. Um, but anyway, it's, a, it's quite an interesting concept, I think. You can invest in oil and gas, say limited partnerships, and there are four different ways that oil and gas partnerships uh, get money to you, or types of investments, I should say. There's the exploration phase, the development phase, there's income that comes off those oil and gas leases, and then there's services um, in conjunction with the oil and gas. And we're not gonna go into great detail in our modules about that, unless we get through everything and we're now ready to move on to the next level, then we'll talk more about oil and gas leases. But just know that that is out there as a potential investment class uh, in this space. Uh, those can be very, very volatile, by the way, so you'll have to have a high tolerance of risk for that. Uh, tangible things like artwork and collectibles. 
Um, I, I think it's really cool if you want to buy a great piece of artwork that is a good inflation hedge and it can be a very good investment. But uh, the big caveat for me is you better really know what you're talking about in the art world and you better have the patience um, to hold on to it for a while. If you don't want the art yourself, there are some funds that invest in high-end art. I think one of them is called Yield Street. Yield Street. Um, but those assets, unless you're in a fund, those assets are very illiquid. And sometimes the funds are illiquid because it might lock it up for a while. But that is something certainly to look at. Timberland is really cool. You invest your money so that you help pay for site management, um, tree management with uh, timber, timberland. And in return, you get a profit for that. And, you know, they're usually planting trees all the time. So the volume of trees grows over time and offers you a potential for steady appreciation. It's a very interesting asset class to me. I've never invested in timberland, but I know people who have and, and say that it's very profitable. And I do believe there are some funds out there that invest in the timberland and you just get an income uh, off that fund as timber is sold. Okay, so let's see. <clears throat> private equity, venture capital, all these really hedge funds, they are usually more for accredited investors and you're gonna find them offered through fund managers, wealth management firms, things like that. So I'm not gonna go into too, too big of a thing about that beyond basically what I just said. Um, if you don't have the minimum investment to, or, or not sure how to vet a sponsor, maybe that's a better way to say it, you're not sure which hedge fund um, to go into, there are funds of funds, meaning you can find a sponsor that you like who's got a fund who invests in other funds. So you don't have to go out and invest 100,000 in 10 different funds to get the diversity of being in 10, 10 different funds when you invest in the one fund that invests in those 10 other funds, if that makes sense. So there are funds of funds that you can do. Just make sure that you uh, pick the right fund manager and do your due diligence on that fund manager and their history. So commodities is another inflation hedge type of alternative investment asset. Uh, those are things that are used to create consumer products like metals, crops, livestock. There's some soft type commodities like corn and sugar cane and cotton that don't store as long. Those are usually bought um, through futures and other things on the stock market that I'm not going to talk about. I might bring in an expert on that, but I am not it. Um, but anyway, you can buy these other tangible assets. Like we owned um, a, a herd of cattle at one point on our farm. So we actually owned commodities. I didn't think about it at the time, but that was an alternative investment that was a little bit inflation hedged for us. And uh, it was a very interesting year and a half uh, during which we owned these cattle. We did sell them for profit uh, and decided not to invest in cattle any longer for our own personal reasons, but it's pretty cool to think about. So, um, and that asset class, by the way, benefits from inflation. That's why I'd say it's an inflation hedge because if the price of your cattle go up or the price of your um, uh, metals or anything else goes up, then you're hopefully making more money because you're invested in those types of products. And the last alternative investment I'm gonna talk about in this video so we don't get so long is franchises. There are people who want to be in business um, but want a more proven track record of a proven type of model. So maybe they will buy a franchise of a Dunkin' Donuts or you know, a car wash or something. So that brings you cash, uh, but that's not a passive investment. So if you're looking for passive investments, unless you really wanna just manage a manager who manages everything else, uh, then I would stay away from the franchises. They can be a lot of money, but it's a lot of work. So that's basically the overview I want to give you of alternative investing today. And uh, be sure to look in your member portal for that list of assets. I'm going to be putting that up pretty soon just to give you some ideas of things you might want to look into. And you can research all of those further, of course. But that's it for today. And thanks for listening. And um, as always, if you have any questions, you can email me at maryhart at alternativeinvestingmovement.com. Maryhart, alternativeinvestingmovement.com. And uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks.